Let's take a look at problem 10-13 where we will compare the carrying value and market value. The name Hilton is well known in the hotel industry and the Hilton annual report contained the following information concerning long-term debt. And the note in the annual report said, the estimated current market value of long-term debt is based on the quoted market price for the same or similar issues. The current carrying value for long-term debt is one thousand one hundred and thirty two and a half million dollars and the current market value is one thousand one hundred and seventy three point five million dollars. Okay, we could read that as one point one billion actually one point one point three two billion is the carrying value and the market value is 1.174 billion. Okay, now we're asked to explain why there's a difference between the carrying value and the current market value of the long-term debt for the Hilton organization. And we are to assume that Hilton decided to retire all of its long-term debt for cash, a likely event, prepare the journal entry to record the transaction. Okay, well let's tackle the explanation first. Why is there a difference between carrying value and uh, current market value? Now, let me give one reason, which is historical cost. Okay, now the point I'm making with historical cost is that um, bonds are recorded on their issue price. It's the historical um agreed upon arm's length transaction that occurred and that rule is very similar to the historical cost principle for recording any other asset. A building for example gets recorded at its historical acquisition cost. That's the price paid for the building or uh, other things given up, notes signed and it's not adjusted in the case of a building it's not adjusted for changes in market value and the treatment for bonds are very similar. Okay, so then the next question is, why do we have, or not, next point is, why do we have changes in, in market value versus uh, um, the issuance price? And there's a variety of reasons, but the most common is changes in interest rates. Okay, let me write that down. Okay, bonds are bought and sold every day, and there are there is a an established secondary market where there are a number of buyers and sellers and those transactions are based on current market interest rates at the date of when bonds get traded. So what we have is a secondary market where a given company's financial instrument called a bond can trade and uh, that that can vary based on all kinds of expectations. Bonds involve a certain degree of risk. There's the risk that it will be paid back. There's a risk that interest there'll be some interest rate fluc fluctuations. So for all of these reasons, bonds have a market value that will be different than the issuance price. Um, and the number one reason is the changes in interest rates. Um, and let me point out an example. Say a corporation issues a 7% bond when interest rates are at 6%, then the bond will sell at a premium. The holder of the bond may then sell it a few years later when interest rates have increased to 8%, and at that point the bond would sell at a discount. Um, now the market value of a bond could also change as the changes in some of those risk characteristics change and that and here we're talking about the risk characteristics for the company itself so if we thought there was an increased probability of bankruptcy then the market value of the bonds would go down because people would perceive that there is more risk that the interest payments on the bond and the principal payments wouldn't be paid back so those are the primary reasons and I'll put the third one down as well um, has changes in risk characteristic risk characteristics of the bond issuing company. Okay.
Now let's tackle the second part. Assume that Hilton decides to retire all of its long-term bonds. Okay, well, bonds normally have a credit balance, so we're going to retire them by booking a debit to bonds payable. Why don't I just write, uh, I'll write debit here and credit here, and we'll do the transactions uh, right here. Underline that. Okay, so... Um, if we got rid of it, the book value is what we would use, the carrying value of the 1132.5 right above my mouse. Okay, and I'll record this in millions so that uh, it doesn't get too large here. Let me format that range a little bit so we don't have to do that again. Okay, then we would, um, now in this case, to pay off the bonds, we have to give up cash, so we'll credit cash. I'll indent that, indent that so we can see the credit. And we would have to give it up at the market rate, right? That's the price that we would have to go on to the secondary bond markets and purchase the bonds that are trading. Okay, then the difference, um, you can mathematically determine is that number less that number. And uh, this is in millions again, so we would have 41 million because it's a debit. Uh, it, it's a loss on bond payable, and that should logically make sense to you. Um, if we have a carrying value of of 1132 and it takes 1173, I'm rounding now, rounding down, 1173 of dollars to retire the bonds, then uh, we've lost an additional 41 dollars based on what we issued them, issued them for at some point in our history and what we are retiring them for today, which is the 1173.5. And that is the second half of the transaction. Um, now, let me add a little bit more. Bonds payable is a liability account. The loss on the bonds payable is a loss account, so it would represent a decrease in stockholders' equity. Well, let me show the change here. The loss would be a decrease, and the cash is an asset account, and we are showing a decrease. I'll use the negative sign there, right there. And that takes care of problem 